Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing this morning? I hope everyone can hear me. Okay, so I guess I'm live. Let's start again. Good morning, everyone. Trying something different to see if that helped any, but I uh, uh, wasn't sure that I was connected through to you guys. So uh, here we are. Today's part nine of Paul's journey. Uh, we're getting close to the end of his first missionary journey, and uh, today we're on to Derby. So we'll start with an opening word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. And thank you so much for this time we get to spend in your word. May I be of uh, help and uh, uh, that your Holy Spirit will flow through me and uh, that I'll be able to uh, be a good ambassador to, of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, Derby is a uh, small town not far from, uh, let me get to uh, the map here, the map back in for a second, you'll see it there right at the <clears throat> end of his journey there. Uh, there's not much there now, they actually have trouble finding it, uh, they found some inscriptions that kind of indicate where it's at, but it's pretty much uh, gone into antiquity, so I don't have a lot of pictures of the area. I have some of the general route, but uh, not of uh, that area itself. And uh, so I'll read a little bit. Today we're in uh, Acts 14:20. How bet as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. And uh, this is uh, just after his stoning. And uh, some want to believe that. Uh, that this may be uh, later on. We'll, he'll uh, talk about a, a time when he had he felt like he had a vision of heaven, and uh, some uh, some speculate this might have been that period of time when he was actually was dead. But uh, but the Lord, I want I don't want to use the word resurrected because that uh, I don't think of it that way. But like uh that this may be when he had his vision is during this period of time when he was out cold and that uh he got rejuvenated by the lord to continue and uh thank god he did because he had a long ways to go so here we are at uh leaving derby and uh And when they had re preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. So we know that they uh, they spent a little time in this city. Uh, and uh, I came across a character that uh, later <clears throat> he talks about. I have a feeling is uh, he met him maybe during this trip and helped set up a church here. Uh, it's a man by the name of Gaius. And I found it kind of interesting. Uh, in Romans 16:23, uh, he mentions him, uh, Gaius, mine host, and of the whole church, saluteth you. Aretas, the chamberlain of city, saluteth you, and Quantus, a brother. And then in uh, Colossians, he mentions him again. For, I mean, Corinthians. Uh, 1 Corinthians, he mentions, uh, I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius. And there was... Uh, But there was one more reference to him. Uh, okay, well, no, I can't find. And I don't have it. I know there's a place where it says uh, Gaius of Derby. No, it actually references him being of Derby. I'll have to find that reference. Maybe and show it to you tomorrow. I thought I wrote it down. Anyways. Uh, 
So there's one other place that's mentioned, and it's by John, actually, and it's in uh, 3 John uh, 1 1. Uh, and John is writing, and this book is about three different people that he ran, ran uh, came across. And one of them was Gaius, the elder unto the well beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Uh, 3 John was actually written to him. And there's a few more verses that uh, kind of give a hint that uh, down in verse 5 uh, says, Beloved, thou dost faithfully whatsoever thou doest to brethren and to strangers which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, they shall do well. Because that for his name's sake they went forth taking nothing of the Gentiles. And as I, I take this back to when uh, when John when uh, Paul makes reference to uh, Gaius being his host and of the whole church, uh, it gives an indication that Gaius was probably a very a man who was helpful to the missionaries coming through his town and uh, was always able to help them with whatever they needed, housing or food or whatever. So I got a kind of a hint there between Third John and this that Gaius. But there's no direct correlation that uh, that this Gaius is the same Gaius that was in Third John. There's no proof of it, but it kind of a hints at it. So I guess found that kind of interesting. So back to Acts, uh, fourteen twenty-two. And so at this point, uh, they uh, they get ready to head back, and it just goes on to say that in the rest of the chapter here. I'll just read the rest of it. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. They basically go back down their route that they did on this first journey and uh, set up churches and appointed elders. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commanded them to the Lord in whom they believed. And after they had passed throughout Presidia, they came to Pamphylia. They went a little different route back. Uh, and when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down into Attilia. And Attilia is, a, is on the coast, but it's a different place than they started from. So they picked up one more city on their way back. But there's not much said about it, except that they established churches. And, then they, and at that point, they, when they left uh, Attilia, they sailed back to uh, towards Antioch of Syria. So, and then, then sailed to Antioch from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the works which they fulfilled. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. So this pretty much seals Paul as being the uh, the apostle to the Gentiles, uh, partially because of some of the persecution and he and there they abode a long time with the disciples. Uh, so they're back in Antioch now, and I'll just uh, there were a few pictures uh, I found uh, of more towards the end there of uh, Attila. And so I'll just show you a few other pictures I found. Uh, this is that area. At, uh, this one here is Antioch of Turkey, which they went back through. There's another ruins. Uh, this is Pasidia that I mentioned. Uh, that was, uh, I think I had. There's some of the other pictures I've shown you in the past. The road again. Yeah, that's why I've already shown uh, most of those pictures. Oh, and this is one of the pictures. It's Pergia uh, that I just mentioned a few minutes ago. That's uh, Pergia again. And this is the temple ruins. And they have Pleiades. 
So that's pretty much it for this. So uh, it's like uh, so they will end off with a word of prayer, and we'll pick up. We'll start looking at the second missionary journey starting tomorrow. And we'll end with a closing word of prayer. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time we had together. And for thank you so much for Paul being uh, being able to reach us Gentiles. Uh, and thank you so much for his, his missionary duties and that uh, he was able to do so much spreading the word throughout most of Asia, which most of us are can account, and that's how we were able to come and be part of the church. And thank you so much, Lord, for this time together. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. So I will talk to everybody tomorrow, and we'll leave with with my ship again as they're they're sailing back to Antioch. And so uh, you all have a great day, and thanks Talk to you later. Bye now.